The anniversary of the Supreme Court Roe versus Wade decision has always been, for it was for 50 years, uh, a day of protest in Washington, uh, usually not very large protest, but protest by the people who wanted to overturn Roe versus Wade. Apparently, it's going to be something different uh, this year. You announced uh, today that on January 22nd, which is that anniversary, 51st anniversary of Roe versus Wade, uh, the vice president's reproductive freedom tour begins uh, around going around the country, yeah. beginning in Wisconsin, uh, which obviously everyone knows yeah. is a very important electoral state. Uh, this seems to be uh, both a, a hugely important issue, obviously, to Democrats and to the Biden administration, but it also seems to be uh, the beginning of a campaign, in a presidential campaign, in which uh, reproductive rights could be the number one issue for your campaign. It is, but I'm going to add, Lawrence, to, the, to who it is important to. It's important to the American people. The majority of Americans agree that the freedom to make decisions about one's own body should be with the individual and not their government telling them what to do. And we saw that in the midterms. We saw that whenever reproductive freedom was on the ballot, from Kansas to California, and most recently from Ohio to Virginia, the voters voted in favor of freedom. And so, yes, I'm, I'm starting in January, uh, getting back on the road, as I did with the college tour this fall. And it is the fight for our reproductive freedoms. And I'll be meeting with folks around the country of all types of background, by the way, and political party affiliation to talk about the fact that one, most of us agree that one does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to believe that the government should not be telling her what to do with her body. And so we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about the reality of what this means. To your point, Lawrence, many of us marched either for d d making sure that Roe v. Wade was strong in its protection of fundamental freedoms. And, and we did that for years, even when Roe v. Wade was intact. Now, past Dobbs, we also know this is not just the subject of a march and a protest. This is about real people every day suffering, and many of them suffering silently. We just saw the, the, the young woman, Kay Cox, and what happened to her? I, I've, you know, you're on at 10 o'clock at night, so I'm going to assume that adults are watching Lawrence. And I'm just, we have to be real on this. In our country right now, there are women having miscarriages in toilets. There are women who cannot afford to go to a state that will allow them access to the health care they need, who are suffering. There's only one state in the South, and that's Virginia, that still has retained a law that allows a woman to make decisions about her own body. And so this is an issue that, yes, I do believe will be resolved in November of next year, because I do know that the American people fight for freedom and believe in the woman's right to make decisions about her own body. But understand, every day until then, there are women suffering in our country in horrible ways. And look, let me tell you, there's going to be a split screen on this, too, in November of 24, to your point about the election. There's really going to be, of all the issues we've discussed so far, none of them are binary. This one is. November of 24, binary. On the one hand, you're going to have the folks who are standing, such as President Joe Biden and me, saying we trust women to be able to make a decision about what is in their best interest, and women can trust us to protect their fundamental freedoms. And on the other hand, you're going to have folks who want a national ban and have the gall to tell women who are even the survivors of rape or incest that they don't have the right to make decisions about what happens to their body next. So I think there's going to be a clear uh, choice on this issue and so many others next year in November. Well, that, that brings us to a challenge that you have uh, in this campaign, because there seemed to be a polling that shows a single issue reaction uh, on the Democratic side of voters, voters who support you've had. Uh, they don't like uh, your policy in Israel at the moment, so they're not uh, supporting uh, the Biden-Harris ticket. 
Uh, but that same person might fully approve enthusiastically of what you just said. Uh, and, and so the question becomes, when you get to November, how do you take all of the different single issue uh, voters out there who are disappointed uh, for various reasons uh, in the Biden administration and say to them, here is the single issue uh, that, that you should concentrate on, or here is why you should vote for this ticket despite uh, what you don't like about the issue that you, you disapprove of? I do believe, Lawrence, and, I, and I'm familiar, obviously, with the, the term and the, the, the philosophy about single-issue voters. But, again, back to the split screen. I mean, you look at bans. We want to ban assault weapons. They want to ban books. You look at it in terms of where we are in the economy. We are fighting for working people and increasing access to capital for small businesses, and they're cutting taxes on the richest people in the country to the point that they're contributing to a deficit. Where we are on choice, we just talked about. Where we are on climate, where the choice in its split screen is you got people who are denying or greenwashing and delaying progress on one of the most and the highest of existential crises we've ever faced. We, on the other hand, have invested historic amounts of dollars, over a trillion dollars, in the climate crisis and building a clean energy economy. I think all of these issues are important to voters who are going to be going to the polls in November, and, and they will make their decisions, obviously. Um, but there are a lot of critical issues at stake. And, you know, every election cycle, we talk about this is the most election of our lifetime. Lawrence, this one is, this one is.